In this movie, we get into one of the more sophisticated concepts and capabilities of Anime Studio, and that is masking. Well, how did we use masking in this image? I've created an eyelid that can blink and cover these eyes, but it never strays outside of the actual white of the eyes. And it's actually not a separate object that has to be stretched or changed over time. It's just incredibly dumbly simple, where you just grab the shape, you drag it down and bring it back up in the timeline, and both eyes blink simultaneously in perfect fit with the eyes. I've also used masking to create the side light on the face. And one of the reasons for that is that we can actually animate this by changing the shape on the side of the face a little bit over time, like a burning torch or something for our little ghoul here at night. Let's go ahead and open these files and take a look at it. If you have access to the exercise files, this is a great one to open because masking is one of those things that when you see it and play with it, it'll just click that much faster. I'm going to go through the explanation and hopefully it'll make pretty good sense. But actually looking at working files saves so much time and learning. So pop this one open and take a look if you can. Let's look at my layers palette in the lower right hand corner over here. I have two layers. I have a group layer which is designated by a folder. And then I have my background layer. I'm going to go ahead and close or hide the background layer so it doesn't interfere with us as we're working with our shape here. Now let me open or twirl this disclosure triangle open to get to the interior of that. And You may be asking where did this folder come from? How did you get that in there? When you go to the new layer icon and click on it, one of the options you have is group layer. It creates an empty folder that you can then grab any of the other layers like vector or image layers or bone layers into the folder to help yourself organize things a little more effectively. That's what I've done here. I have the head background which is essentially like a skull and if I click it and go away then you see all the details built on top of that. I have the eye group which includes the dark rings around the eyes, it includes the blinking eye and the pupils. Then I have the hair group which sits on top of the head and then finally I've got just the head other which is just other little details, nose, mouth, in this case the mouth isn't animated or it would be its own group. Let's take a look at the first implementation of masking and that will be the eye group. I'll open the folder by twirling the disclosure triangle. Let me get that back. We have only four layers in this group. We have the eyes which actually should be named the dark rings around the eyes. We have the whites of the eyes, the pupils, and the eyelid. You may not be able to see the eyelid right now so what I'm going to do is close the head background so you can't see that. I'm going to hide the hair group and hide the head other. Let me close the uh, hair group there. So we're left with the eyes. This is all that makes up the eye group. The eyelid appears to be hiding right now. If I hide it, not the eye group, the eyelid, you really don't see much going on. You can see it appear and disappear just a little bit. Well, let's open this or take away the group properties and see exactly what is made up of in this group. I'm going to double click on the folder and we're presented with a modal dialog box we haven't seen before. This is your layer settings. We'll come back and deal with some of these other areas that we have tabs for later on as we get to those sections. Right now we're going to focus on the masking section. Since this is a grouped folder, we have the ability to apply a masking property to it. And then if we wanted to, we could apply some other properties, but we normally don't on a, on a masking group like this. You create one property because you're wanting to hide everything in the group and then you want to show some of it real specifically. You can designate which layers show and how they show later on. So I choose hide all. However, I'm going to turn this off right now. And this is one of the dialog boxes that unfortunately as you make changes you can't see a dynamic update. If I click OK now, we'll see everything. The top layer, the eyelid layer, is that one right there. To make the eyes blink, I just bring it down over the eyes like that, but let's see how we actually mask it. You can see that the eyes themselves are here, the pupils go above them, which allows us to animate those moving around if we wanted to and get a full pupil. But here's how that's done. The top layer of the group, the enclosing folder, we choose to hide all, everything in the mask. Now a mask, just think of putting a blank, blank sheet of paper over a drawing and you can't see any of it and then you cut out a little hole to see part of it. That is what a mask does. It reveals a tiny part of something. What we do is designate what and how each of these layers functions. So this dark ring around the eyes, I'll double click that and open it. 
I'll go to the masking section of the dialog box. And I said don't mask this layer because I want the entire layer to be seen. The whites of the eyes will open that and come to the masking area. I said add to mask. That means that this will behave as the little cutout that reveals the area. We're going to ignore the one underneath. We're going to say mask this one and it becomes our source shape. The pupils. I said mask this layer, which means that the cutout, the eye whites, will mask that and only reveal the part that is within that area of the eye whites. Finally, for the eyelid, I've chosen mask this layer so it too gets matched by the little cutout of the whites of the eyes. I'll select OK. I'll come back to our group. I will re-enable hide all. I'll reveal our other layers. And now I'm going to select the eyelid, grab my translation tool, and this is what a blink looks like. We could animate that over time. So that's how you use masking. We've got masking for the side lights. Go ahead and open this file if you have access to exercise files and take a look at it. It's very important to understand this as we get into the rest of the series.